Hi and welcome to another episode of Game Creation. So today we're going to be looking at arrays because arrays are amazing. Um, you'll use arrays all the time when you're doing computer programming. Arrays are incredibly useful. They just basically collect a whole load of information and make it very, very easy to retrieve that information. And they're quite efficient at storing information. And that's what we need now. We need to, a way of storing our map um, tiles. So we want to know where the sea is, where the grass is, where the sand is. And arrays are a perfect way of doing it. Now, there's loads of different types of functions in ClickTeam for doing this. Uh, I'm going to use the array object because it's the standard click team object, but there are multiple, like loads and loads of ways of doing this. Um, one of the useful things about arrays is just the way they're created and the way they store information. It's very, very useful for tiles, and I'll explain that. If you don't know what an array is, array is not the same, but it's very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. And I know quite a few people who would be screaming if I ever said that. Because um, I, I uh, say databases are like an Excel spreadsheet and then they just don't talk to me forever. And what I mean by that is arrays store information with an X, a Y and a Z dimension. Now, an X dimension is just a cross. Well, an Excel spreadsheet has a cross, right? The Y dimension is down, right? So an uh, Excel spreadsheet has the down. The Z dimension is very, very easy on Excel to think about because you have different sheets at the bottom. That's your Z dimension. So every time you click on a different sheet, you have a brand new spreadsheet to play with. And that's the same with the Z dimension. So the Z dimension is basically flicking between sheets in an Excel spreadsheet. It is the same, almost. Um, arrays are very fussy in a lot of programming languages of what you're storing in them. Um, click team actually are very uh, flexible but they're normally not. Um, so for instance, you have two different types of data. You have integers and you have string data. Integers are numbers and they have to just be numbers. Strings can be numbers, they can be words, they can be anything, okay? So a string is basically uh, anything you want. Um, computers love numbers, so that's why integers or numbers get their own category because it's a lot easier um, to work with numbers and there might be some advanced computation you might want to work out an average and it's so much quicker with numbers with integers with strings it's, it's horrible because they could be anything there and so working out the average of apple and banana who blimmin knows right so that's why the two are often separated um, so if you think about our tile situation well we have an x and we have a y and at the moment we're doing tiles so the Z will all be the same, but we might want to be doing enemies and power-ups and other stuff down the line. So that would be the different sheets. So we can actually store quite a lot in the same array. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be quite a fiddly one and quite a complicated one, but I think a rewarding one. I think we'll have a sense of accomplishment at the end of this. So let's go to the screen. Okay, so we've opened up uh, the same document as we've used and saved it. There we are. Saved. Control and S to save. Let's double click on it and let's see what we've got. So we haven't really changed that much so far. Still got that grass in the background. Okay, so to um, create an array, just double click anywhere and just go to array. Place it outside. It is actually invisible. If I put it up here, for instance, you would never see it. This is one of the extensions in ClickTeam, which you'll never see. You have here so that you can change uh, different bits about it, but it won't ever show. That little icon there is just to sort of tell you that's an array, so you can have a look at it. And you'll see here that this is exactly what I was talking about. Um, these are strings, so this will uh, accept any strings, and then these are integers or number array. Now we actually want this to be a number array, uh, we don't need it to be a string. We could be a string if we wanted to do. Um, this is an important option here. Now, this is going to be the bane of your life, so I'm going to say it straight away. Base 1 index means that the numbers start at 1. So the first one in the array is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, etc. Beautifully simple and very, very obvious, because if you've got the fifth one along, it would be five. Wow. 
However, our fast loops don't work like that. Our fast loops all start at zero. So, for simplicity, I'm going to untick that and we're going to have a horrible zero based index. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, and you're going to have to just remember to take away 1 from whichever one you want to change, okay? But it matches the current system we're using. Now I could go into the event editor and add 1 to, um, if I just go in there now, click the wrong one, always do. If I go in there now, um, I could set the ultra value y to the loop index plus 1, and the ultra value x to the loop index plus 1. I'm a lot more comfortable with working with zero based indexes. It's just generally what I'm used to. Um, so I'm going to untick that. But if you're really, really annoyed having to start counting at zero, then just leave that ticked and make that fix. Globality application is, means that it will survive between frames. Um, that's something we can worry about later. You don't have to click that at this point. Now these bits here seem a bit daunting. And this is actually very simple, it's just how many um, across is your array. So think of the Excel spreadsheet. Currently there will be 10 columns because the X dimension is 10. And currently there will be 10 rows because the Y dimension is 10. And there's only one sheet. Now, you might think that this is really critical to change now. Click Team's actually pretty sympathetic. And what Click Team will do is it will expand the array if you're writing to it. So if I write something in position 10, which is the 11th one along, <laughs> see I'm already getting confused, um, then it will just expand the array for me. Um, it does take a little bit of a hit on performance, but since we're going to be creating this array ourselves and then giving it to the end user, giving it to the person playing, we don't need to be too fussed about this because the performance hit will only be felt by us. Um, what I would suggest normally, if the user is creating this array, always try and be over generous in what the possible dimensions will be, um, just because um, when Click Team is creating them like one by one, um, you can get into some issues with, um, it takes a bit of work for Click Team to do that. Um, so you want, want to just make sure that these are sort of um, roughly um, a generous sum of what it might be. Um, modern day computers, it's like this This was an issue like 10 years ago. Modern day computers is probably not, not that's a problem anymore. Okay, so we're not going to be too worried about this. Click Team will sort this out for us, um, which is really nice. And if it doesn't, we shall soon see. But this does mean that we can only use numbers in our array now and you have to make this choice now so it's either going to be strings so if I think I'm going to put a word in it it has to be text array um, but I know I'm not going to be putting words in this um, so I'm going to switch it to number array and this is going to be a pain in the backside to change later on um, if you get this wrong because the way you store data will be different in the event editor okay so what do we do now well, we need to have some way of um, saving and loading this and, and changing it. So let's start with changing it. Okay, let's have a think. Uh, it'll be under tile creation. Um, mm, yeah, let's do it under tile creation. So what I'm going to say is at the start of the frame, I want to write to my array and because we're going to be using um, a three-dimensional array, uh, it just basically means we're going to be using the Z as well. And you can actually just use one dimension. You could just use the X index if you want. Uh, we'll go write a value to X, Y, Z. And the value we've got right is, I don't know, 999. Um, the X index will be, I don't know, let's pick 20. Y index 20 and the Z index will be, oh, zero. Okay, and let's run that. Now what I can do is add the array object. So we can have a look at it. And you'll see that the X dimension and the Y dimension has been pushed um, to include the new value uh, 2020. So that's great. Fantastic. Excellent. That looks good. Okay. So now we've written to our first array, which is brilliant. 
Not very useful though. Um, so, what I want to do is I'm going to edit that and I'm going to hmm, put a 1 in position um, 1, 1. Okay. So we've set um, one of the array items, so quite an early one on, to 1. Um, and let's have a play. So as we create each of the tiles, what I want to do, so I'm going to right click on this one and change the direction. So select direction, and we're going to calculate the direction. So notice that grass is at 0, C is at 1, and sand is at 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the array. So read value from x, y, z. And we're going to have, I'm just going to put in a few zeros there because I want to copy in the fast loops. So we're going to nick that fast root loop there. Okay. So the row would be the x, no the row would be the y, see I told you I'd keep mixing that up, fast loop, get loop index, paste that in, I'm just using that to nick the, the names, always useful, okay, fast loop, get loop index, paste that in. And now the Z would just be zero. Remember, we're storing all the tiles in that first Excel sheet. So the first one, so it's just going to be zero. And remember, it's zero based. It's not one based because uh, we changed that setting. Click OK. So what it's saying is look in the direction found in the array. So let's run it now and see what happens. Uh, actually, let's just shift this above that. So this needs to happen first. So start a frame um, because we want it to set that in the array first and then read from the array. Perfect. So that's exactly what we thought. At position 1, 1, we're going to set this to direction 1, which is C. And there we go. How brilliant is that? I didn't think that would work. <laughs> Normally when I do this, um, it never works first time. So we're going to put some sand in now. Uh, still have the x index 1, but let's do this as 20 and let's see what happens. There you go. So it's going to be position 1 and 20, and it's changing it to sand. <gasps> wow, how good's that? Okay, we also need a way of loading and saving this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and paste it to duplicate it. I'm going to get rid of that one by dragging from a blank cell into that and I'm going to then save it so file save array to file now I've got this off screen at the moment but what I've done is I've created a, a folder called assets uh, which will go with my game so you'll have anything external to the the exe file to the actual game file and I might incorporate them later on and put, put it into binary and do all sorts of clever things but I'm just going to have it in assets at the moment and I'm going to call it Array. I'm very, very original. Okay, so select that. So save Array to that. Um, and let's run. Run application. And then let's close it. Okay, now I'm going to delete that now. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to disable that. You might need it later. So to disable it, right click and do activate, inactivate line. So if I wanted to get it back, I click that one again, it'll get it back. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load, load array from file. And I'm going to click that same array one. Okay, now this is the moment of truth. So I have saved it to that position there and now I'm going to load it from that position it's a moment of truth time uh, and it worked perfectly 
So what it's now doing is loading the array and um, putting, changing that to a sand tile. So now there's nothing in the code making that sand tile. All that it, all that's making that sand tile is that file in the game folder. And I've just made a folder called assets. Um, I, I save all of these um, files in different folders for each week we do this so I can keep track of what it is we're doing. But I want to make sure that I keep that array file kind of um, separate so that it, it can uh, kind of work with it. Um, and I'm not having to keep copying the array file each time, which would get tedious. Um, and I think that's going to be it for today um, because we currently have a way of storing all these tiles position like all these tiles states whether they're sea whether they're sand whether they're grass and we, we're saving it in a file so that each time we're creating the same background the same tiles which will be which will be really really great however that's going to be really annoying going through the event editor and changing the tiles each time that's going to get very very irritating um, so we need a much, much better way of being able to manipulate the level editor or the level itself. Um, and that is what tomorrow's video is going to be. And I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.